Oh jeez, well, if I scoot or is this a good spot right here? Uh, you, can, you can scoot in a little bit if you want. Okay. What, what happened was I was at EVO, t or sorry, I was at EVO 2014, and at EVO 2014 we were watching StarCraft 2 on the big scene, and there's top players like, um, like MC playing, and we just keep hearing this shouting off to our left, and there's this whole area that you know, it's broken up into thirds, this is in Anaheim, and the big area in the center, there's all these people cheering for this Pikachu player playing Super Smash Bros. The front of dreams. FOD was probably banned to avoid the chain grab, and I kind of like the FOD counter pick for Max, because with a player as technical as Silent Wolf, the changing heights of the platforms can really do a lot at messing him up. Potential stock gets the up air tail spike and suited so that. And we just saw everyone just looking to the left and watching that instead of the Blizzard sponsored game in front of us. Whew. Nice light shield. Not even trying to get shield stab as the shields do get really small. And oh. another stock. Pikachu! Pika Pika! And that's when I found out how popular the Super oh, yeah, Smash Bros. Melee was. And then you start to look into it and you see the technical level of these players. And then you try and play and you're like, okay, I want to learn how to do that. So that's how I got it. We went from trouble. I think, you know, Axe has been a fan of Team Rocket because that trouble doubled extremely quick. The Pikachu champ is humongous here. Oh, oh man. Silent Wolf. We've seen a lot of four stocks on this stage before. But 45 seconds, Silent Wolf might be down to his last stop. Is he going to get it before a minute? Passes? So it really comes down to how casual you want to be and how hardcore you want to be. If you want to be hardcore, you have to be really technical, really frame data specific, lots of actions, lots of spacing. If you want to be a little more friendly, you can go with Brawl, you can go with even PM, you can go with uh, the N64 game or you can go with uh, Smash 4. But the highest technical gameplay you will see is in Melee. Well, let's see! He's right near the edge! Oh my god! Destruction! That was emphatic! That was amazing! Mortality! Are you watching? This boy Walgreens Drake says take care! You guys can thank me later! High above Salt Lake City, the capital city of Utah. Utah, that you might be one, heading back to Utah a little sooner than freeway. we think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely about to get back on the freeway with his boys. Take his bags. The Utah Smash community isn't as strong as other areas. Apparently, Net actually uh, first talked to me in the last set. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's oh. free Oh, oh, you. Uh, I was about to say, Jim Perry's not here, comes the wobble. I'm about to stop and he just freaks out and slaps his controller into the table and like, tears in his eyes. Yep. He's got the salt sign with him today. He's an inconsistent player in Utah as far as like on the PR and like where he places. Oh, but that was beautiful. Yeah, that was like sick. Uh, Commaster is definitely you know, dominant. We have a hard time taking tournaments off him. My tag is Phil Nye the Samus guy. My tag is Gus. My tag, Salty Dog. My tag is Legend. Oh, my gamer tag is Zero. My tag is CC Vice. Gamer tag, did I not say that? Bakwika. My tag in that game is CU. So my tag is Demo Disc. Uh, my gamer tag is Grinfinity. Uh, I'm known by Reptile. I'm Gangsta Kirby. I'm Net1234. My name is Sam. My tag is. Sam. My, my name's Garrett. Garrett Bigelow. I play Samus. I mean Falco and Cheek. I, I made Yoshi. Kirby and Falcon for Melee. I made Mark. Oh, I, I play Captain Falcon. I mean Cheek and Fox. And I play none other than the dreaded Duck Hunt dog. Uh, I mean Ice Climbers. And I play Samus. And Falco is my main. I play Kirby. I main Marth in Super Smash Brothers Melee. He is Sword Girl. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the long short of it. My cousins, my, my family, we used to play video games all the time together. Uh, I couldn't afford the systems, but my cousin could, so we always did that together. And so I have a lot of good memories of hanging out with family, playing video games. And uh, I kind of continue, like, like, I continue to have that feeling when I play now. Smash Brothers is a party game where all Nintendo's characters sort of fight. It's something you do if like you're at a party and you're just hanging out and want to play video games, but it can also be played competitively. So in a traditional fighting game, your goal to win the game is to reduce your opponent's uh, hit points to zero. However, in Smash Brothers, it's a it's a different system. It's based on a ring out system. There's this box that the game takes place in that you have to put your opponent outside of to win the game. However, in this box, there is a platform or series of platforms known as a stage, and of course, you and your opponent. As you hit your opponent, their damage goes up, which is a percentage, uh, uh, and it measures how far they fly away when they get hit. So obviously, you want them to have a higher percentage so that they're easier to hit, hit outside the box that the stage takes place. Uh, melee is the most visceral of the Smash games. Uh, although you can make an argument that uh, um, the 64 version is, is possibly more visceral, but because there's a good mixture of defensive and offensive options, uh, you get really well rewarded for any action you choose to take, or, or rewarded or punished. So like, if you choose the wrong defensive option, you know, you lose the situation and you lose your stock. If you choose the right offensive option, you take, take your opponent's stock. You, know, you hit your opponent and the controller rumbles, but also you have like a three hit combo you're guaranteed to get, gar guaranteed to get, and then maybe you'll finish off the stock, that kind of things. Like there's a very uh, stark risk reward system. You're gonna get, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Sure. You're gonna get fucked up. just so fast paced. It's so adrenaline inducing to be able to get a four stock or to go last stock versus last stock and get that final hit and trade. Just, it's immensely satisfying to just play and to get the combos and to hit every beat and make sure they miss every beat. There's just nothing more empowering about taking the other person out and outplaying them, not only their character, but outplaying the player. There's just so much stuff that goes down in the scene. It's just like, it's just fun watching uh, the, the storylines unfold throughout our scenes. Like when I first got into the to this game in Utah, uh, Net one, two, three, four was just getting to the game as well. And like, he got really good really fast. And so like, I saw him over the course of like a year and a half become like our best player. But then like, he started training Logos who like within six months then became our best player. They used to go back and forth a lot, I know these two, but yeah. I think Logos has kind of been winning a bit more. There, there's a lot of, you know, this person hasn't be beaten this person, this person hasn't beaten this person, you know, this is their first time overcoming something, you know, that kind of stuff. Middle, I picked it up competitively middle of freshman year. I got in like a little bit of trouble and I couldn't like hang out with my friends for like half, like a hot minute, so all I had to do was like play Smash in my basement, so I just grounded over the summer for like, Super hardcore, so that's how I got into it and been playing it since then. Back before I had a girlfriend, uh, Smash was like life, and I would like be out till like two in the morning, and all my life was Smash, revolved around Smash, and hanging out with the homies. But now there's like a bit of a girlfriend. I mean, she'll watch it with me, but she doesn't want to kind of go out festing or whatever. So I gotta keep girlfriend separate from Smash, more or less. But you know, it's not too bad. Recently, there's the Chris Best, the best worst set ever of all time. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a legend now. Uh, so me and this guy were playing on the main stage of the biggest tournament ever of all time and we were just both playing like garbage out of our minds looking so bad. Do you see? Why just would you do so anything? Just, just block. block. Just keep blocking. Just keep blocking. 
Both of these guys are actually idiots, to be honest. Chris Best uses Chris Best uses up B like an idiot in Street Fighter uses Shoryuken. It's like any time that there's any frame disadvantage, they just DP. Oh my goodness. And then I have the win, and I mess up and I accidentally push up on my stick instead of my forward smash, so instead of killing him, I go, and I do like this, I hit the sweet pose and the whole crowd dies, and then I get and then I like die two seconds later to a stupid freaking forward air. He died off of the side from forward from he got forward thrown into forward tilt and died off the side. Oh my god. Net one, two, three, four, and Chris Best. See that match has got like sixty thousand views. I get recognized from time to time posting on Facebook or Melee Hell, Smash Boards, like, oh you're now one, two, three, four, you're the, you're the best worst player ever. Like, yeah, it's me. Uh, I'm Santiago Pinto, my tag's Fable, I play Melee. Fable, he's the new young gun, he's from New Jersey, and he's got, uh, he plays Sheik 2, and he's got like the fucking reactions of like, uh, he's just, it's nutty, he's so fast, he, like, he'll down throw you and just re grab you over and over and over again, you just wanna kill yourself, and it's so boring, he's really freaking good at it. The running joke is that I'm like, nine years old, like everyone always says that. So how old is Fable? Is he like the next Wiz Wizrobe? I want to say Fable's 13. 13? Yeah. I mean, what's your guess, dude? 15? 15, 15 okay. Damn. All right, I'm a blast. That's... So Mita King is one of the best players in the world for Melee, like top five or four in the world. And he just kind of randomly came to our regional here. He needed partners for Melee and Smash 4, so I messaged him a few times about it, just saying like I was available. And eventually he just said like sure. When we actually had to play, we didn't really talk, we kinda of just played and I was he kinda of, he kinda of just like knew what I was gonna do, so he tried to synergize it with it and it worked out really well. We had like a lot of team combos. He just like we lost to one game throughout the whole tournament and when that happened he got a little bit mad. But then he just told me like what to do to fix our teamwork. Uh, then we just did a lot better and just won it pretty easily. So I started in Project M. My friends and I just kind of messed around in Brawl. And like, you know, just kind of played Smash how most people do. And uh, we found out about Project M and it just kind of created this like snowball effect, I guess, of just like wanted to be able to do more and more tech skill. That's kind of how it started for me. And then I realized like, hey, I can, you know, compete and make a name for myself in Utah. I work at Domino's being a delivery driver. So uh, I've gotten recognized at work for people who are trying to get into the scene for Melee, so I thought that was pretty cool. So Net and I have kind of always been rivals. Uh, I played Net in Project M at my first new mod in Grand Finals. I ended up winning that tournament, so that just kind of like sparked our little rivalry. Rivalry. I went over to uh, Melee, and I actually preferred PM at the time, and you know, kind of thought the game was dumb. But uh, Ned is definitely um, someone that I see that pushes me, just because we. He started a little bit before me, but he's always just been kind of that like guy that you know has got to beat. So we were training partners for a long time. We went really close. So he, he's a little better than me now because he, he definitely he practices. He goes out of state. He, he freaking earned it.
in the States. I'm not quite sure. Um, it could be a new player that has moved from Arizona called 40 Freak. But I'm not quite sure. Uh, he has lost quite a few tournaments now. But uh, the, if you ask anyone else in the state, he'll usually say Calm Master. Best player in Utah? Obviously, Calm Master. In the state? Calm Master. Ammon Calm Master's swag and styles himself. He's just a, he's a monster. He plays Captain Falcon, the most fastest, unwieldy, craziest, dumbest character in the game. And he just makes us all look bad and takes our money. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> uh, so my name is Ammon Styles. Um, I go by Commaster. That's my gamer tag. My play Super Smash Brothers Melee. Uh, been playing for uh, competitively on and off for around 10 years. I'm from Washington State originally. I was born in Seattle. Yeah, I've just moved out to the Utah scene a couple, no, a year ago almost now. So it's been awesome. I love it here. A lot of cool guys. Like I saw, you guys had a good scene here. Good enough as far as population goes. Like, there's a lot of people here, and they uh, there's a good amount who really want to try to get better. And so, like, that was perfect for me because uh, I came from Washington where there's a lot of good players, you know, Silent Wolf, Blade Wise, like, so that's where I grew up. So coming out here to a scene where it's like, okay, now I don't have to worry so much about competing with these top players, and at the same time, I can help a lot of these newer players get really good at the game. At least try, try my best to help them get good. Yeah, it's been awesome to see that, that uh, transformation or like just increase in improvement. That was so good. That was such a juicy full off right there. Uh, can't jump into the back airs. This whole set, he's got to start respecting that back air. Oh, yeah. Um, I originally played Luigi because I loved his uh, aerials, like his, his chop and stuff like that, his down air. I always loved those things. And because my brother took Mario as a character, so I was like, all right, you take Mario, I'll take Luigi, I guess we'll be, you know, the Mario Bros. So that was, that was kind of the original reason. I was only like 12 when I started playing him, so not, not like a really logical or like calculated reason to choose him, which is probably, you know, a lot of the reason why I kind of look back and wonder, you know, should I have gone with a better character? But um, he's worked out, like, I've, I've, I've loved playing Luigi competitively, especially because there's a lot of stuff that people don't see normally that, you know, you get to explain to people and, you know, just, you get to meet a lot of new people just because people respect your style and, and the character that you use. But yeah, like I said, I've been actually transitioning to Captain Falcon more so. They're both aerial-based characters and so I really, that's kind of always been my style as far as Smash play goes. Um, so that's why, like, I love those characters probably the most. And just because they can, I can express myself more through their fluid movement and stuff like that. So I th I'd say those were my biggest reasons for, for playing Luigi and, and Captain Falcon. Like I said, I grew up in Washington. That's kind of where I got introduced into the competitive scene. I'd say 2006, maybe 2000, early 2005. Um, my brother came home one Thanksgiving break and me and my friends had been playing like all the time. We just played casually. We tried to make it as competitive as we could, even though we were limited as far as like advanced play goes. So anyways, I had a brother who got, got home from school, from college, and he told us about smash boards and all these advanced techniques, and he started showing us stuff. And ever since then, I just got totally enveloped in, in the scene. So <laughs> that's kind of where 2005, 2006 was like the very start of uh, the, the advanced side of things. I was only like 14 or 15 when I went to my first tournament. It was basically, for me, just like, the coolest thing I'd ever thought of because Smash Brothers, ever since 64 Smash, I've just been totally in love with the game. It's just a little local back in Washington. I think there's, you know, 10 or 15 people there, but I ended up winning that one. From then on, I just kind of had this huge confidence boost as to, as to what I could do as far as Smash goes. Between going to tournaments back in Washington for a few years and just loving the game enough to play it <laughs> almost every day throughout high school and college, it just became a really, a really you know, like kind of deep passion for me between the competitive side and the, the simple gaming side of it. So uh, those those two factors kind of propelled me forward, I guess, into like into major tournaments. I think probably the best placement I ever had was way back in 2007, I think. Uh, FC Diamond was one of the first majors I went to. I got seventh, I think, there. So that was kind of like the highlight of as far as placings go. I'd say definitely Smash. In the Smash scene, I, I feel I've found more confidence uh, than pretty much any other aspect. Definitely my job, I 
have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. <laughs> so coming to the Smash side is like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I love the game. Like, I can be pretty honest with myself about like, you know, who I am, and and I can express that as well through the game. So it's like, Smash for me is a really big outlet for just being able to express myself. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's great for that reason, definitely. And he's good at getting those. Luigi Kid's more like good at getting uh, down B and punishing off that. Like popping you up in the air and punishing. Let's see if Calm Master's uh, hot off that uh, loser set. Wow. Oh, oh man. Casey. I guess that answers that question. So how do you feel about like Nintendo's support or the like, lack thereof of the community? Oh, that sounds like a hard question. I love Nintendo. And, but I'm a huge fan of esports. And esports are what drive a gaming company to better success. So I think, as a business point of view, it is very, very bad for Nintendo not to support Melee. Just because Melee is, it's their game. It's their baby. It's Nintendo's baby that they're just not taking care of. And it's, I don't like that they don't support it, because it's very sad to me. The walk is here. Uh oh. Done. That is Done. it. Abadango moves on to buzz. Finishing at fifth place. Evo is so important to competitive players and it's so important to Smashers. The Smashers a while ago actually had to fight to get into Evo. And they had the Nintendo wanted to shut them down. And the community was saying no. So that's, a, that's another reason why Evo is really important to the Smash community. Because we have to fight to get there. It really frustrates me. You see games like Dota and CSGO and Overwatch, and they're just getting so much support from their developers, and it's making them into like a thriving esports scene. We've had legal issues with mods like Project M and with making revenue off of our videos, and it's been really hard for like the entire community as a whole, but I think that's what makes the Melee and Smash 4 community like really good for anyone who's in it. I think it's a little, a little stupid. Uh, it was giving them a lot of uh, popularity and uh, fame out there. People really like Project M, and it wasn't like, because uh, for Project M you have to have Brawl, so it's not like people were, you know, torrenting it or downloading it. It's people already had the Brawl disc. Um, and I feel like it brought a lot of new players into the scene. Pull it off. Oh, comes in like the train. Oh, goes for it. Ooh, oh, no! And that no, that's... is it. No, nope, no. Nope. Nope. He was yet. able to DI up. No. Nope. There's the win. Just a little too high on that. Melee made it to Evo by themselves. No one, Nintendo like made Melee and then forgot about it and made Brawl and then forgot about it and made Smash 4. So they, they don't really care that we love the older game that they made. Well, honestly, it's a little disappointing because the Melee scene has grown immensely and it's always been growing, but we haven't been able to grow with any help. The fans of Smash Brothers raised over $90,000 for breast cancer to get their game into EVO and allow people to watch it from EVO. I almost guarantee you the majority of that money was actually from guys that didn't get the chance to go to EVO and just wanted to see Smash Brothers played on the main stage of the biggest fighting game tournament in the world in 2013. So it's taken us a lot longer to get where we are and we're still not as high as we'd like to be, but we're still one of the highest fighting games of all time. So if, so if I was Nintendo, I would support the game. Um, I, I feel like Melee has five years left without Nintendo support. It's just a little disappointing to not get the support you need for a game you just love so much.
kind of took a hiatus from the competitive side of things from 2010 to 2012. So I, I went and served a mission for my church um, in Nicaragua for two years. So during those two years, I didn't play it like at all. And basically, when I got home, I didn't. I think brawl was out, and like I don't know. I just didn't feel like melee competitively was going anywhere. So I took a break for another like almost a year. So it's been almost three years since I'd played competitively. But then <laughs> I don't know. Like uh, one year just in college, I was in Hawaii, and I just. And I was just thinking back on Smash, and it's just like, man, this game is so good. And so I didn't really have anybody to play with, but I was just like, whatever, I'll just play with like computers. So I just started doing that for like a month straight, and like I just remembered how much I loved the game, and that kind of got me back into it competitively, along with a few other people. So it's just kind of crazy that I never ever thought I would get back into it after such a long stretch of time uh, going without playing it competitively. So that's been a crazy experience, just jumping back into the scene, especially seeing how it's grown with like all the media and all the like, all the you know like Twitch and everything like that, everything that's given it more exposure. So it's been really fun to get back into that, but also been like overwhelming in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but I've been to several major tournaments since then. I'm always within top 25, top 50. Uh, still working to get that first place though. That's that's the goal right now. <laughs> Gets it. Really? Last stock. Literally he has him. His, his, yeah, he's, he's zero death before. One so. good combo. Yeah, I feel like he's definitely in Johnny's hand right now. I think Johnny's definitely gonna take this. Uh, edge guard. Unless it's opportunity. See, like, a really crazy zero death. Okay. Oh, oh my ooh, God! He had opportunity. It. I actually thought that was it. What? Johnny Shield's not existent. Bad spot. Johnny's a little rattled. It looks like. Oh, he just goes to the knee. Oh, soft knee too. Let's go. Oh, what if he tried to forward be there? Damn it! Why not? He lost. <laughs> you wouldn't have. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't have. You're no. you're a bad Marth. I don't know. I knew the <laughs> options. I knew the. Uh, he wasn't gonna. He could have won. If you would afford B, like I'd, I'd say the majority of my friends at this point in my life are from the Smash community, and they're all really cool people, at least the mass majority. So I'd say if you really want to just kind of open up and meet some really cool people and just like uh, <laughs> get to know a game that's incredibly complex but incredibly simple and fun at the same time, then Smash is definitely something you should invest time in. It's uh, very rewarding when you put the time into it, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great way to just meet new people and to open new avenues that you never thought uh, were possible before. You know, Melee isn't just like improving how good you are at your character, it's improving you as, your, as a person, almost like a spiritual journey, so to speak. I've learned a lot about myself and gained a lot of confidence, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, gained a lot of confidence and just like really 
learn to take responsibility for my own actions and learn mentality and how I can, you know, dictate everything in my life by it. So melee for me is not just, you know, a video game where I sit down next to a person and try to beat them. It's a lot of the try a lot of the time I'm trying to improve myself and see how far I can go. It's something I'm passionate about. Uh, I just I hope the game keeps kicking. I didn't want to see it go as long as possible. It's too good to die. Smash Bros. is the most amazing video game that has ever been created. I don't care if you play Smash 4, I don't care if you play Brawl, it's, it's all good. Smash is an amazing game, the system is great, the competition's great, the scene's amazing. The community is one of like the greatest things apart about the game. Uh, like, even if like you come to a tournament and not even play and just like hang out with guys, it's still like super worth it. It's tons of fun just to watch people kind of interact and see and just kind of be with people that love the game as much as you do. Uh, well, in high school, I'm super quiet, but like when I'm with my Smash friends, I'm like a lot more outgoing and talkative. Yeah, I've made a, made a lot of friends from this game and I can definitely say that like for years on, I'm going to make more friends and that's always great to know a lot of people and this is the scene to do it. So, you're gonna get your ass kicked pretty much and it's gonna be over and over and over again. Like, there's there's no stopping. He's like until it like starts clicking and then you start getting better and improving. But um, don't let it deter you because once you start winning, it's a better feeling and it starts to get easier and easier if you just work on yourself. Just see how good you are relative to everyone else, and then sort of just find people around your level and just play with them until you get better, and then you can just keep going on. From there. Pick a character. It's good to like play with a lot of different characters, but focus on one. Learn the ins and outs of it. Well, if you've never tried it before, it's definitely fun. Just grab some friends, grab a beer or something, and then you'll have a blast every single time, guaranteed. That's always what I did. Uh, if you're going to get into a competitive level, get ready. Melee is the greatest fighter that has ever been made. It is so fun. It's so difficult. So rewarding. Anybody out there just wants to get into it, please do. We need a bigger team, we need more players, and we need more talent, so please come. Don't, just don't give up. Like, no matter how hard it gets, or how much it seems like you're never going to improve, and even if you've plateaued, just don't get up, because you'll eventually get there. It took me a year to get where I am, and I'm still barely scraping the surface of what I can do. Anyone can get good at any of the Smash games, they just have to put time and effort into it and never do it. If you don't play Smash, you are missing out. That's all I can say. Tell the game.